Okay, I think I'm done then. And the video did its job. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I was expecting a lesser crowd, but it's great. So, that is amazing. Um, I will be presenting Leo Lab's take on why ASET tests are bad, direct descent ASET tests are bad. And I will try to quantify the impact that they have had on low Earth orbit and why commercial companies like Leo Labs are doing uh, what they do and how they are trying to solve their pro this problem on their end. Before uh, we start, I will take you back in time to 15th November 2021 when Cosmos 1408 uh, broke up and uh, the timeline that followed because uh, this was a surprise for our team as well and it was a stress test for our platform and our team and I believe they performed beautifully because within the first two days, uh, Leo Labs was able to report 253 new fragments and characterize this event as a non-hypervelocity collision. This characterization was uh, helpful in understanding the extent of the debris that will be created and the distribution and fragmentation size and their orbits uh, over the course of time. As we, uh, as we tracked this event, we observed high uh, hike in conjunction uh, alerts for different customers as the debris cloud persists in its orbit and pass through the plane of different constellations. So we observed and alerted our customers about that. And even now, 600 days since event, we have seen rapid deorbiting of uh, the cloud, and majority of the cloud has decayed, but large debris remains in orbit, which still continues to, uh, to pose threat to, to our customers and, uh, in general, to other, other operators. Uh, so that is, that is why ASET tests are bad. So that is the goal to uh, here. And uh, this is all the reporting done during uh, this event uh, as Leo Labs was vocal about it and was, uh, was sharing this information publicly so as to inform uh, the overall operators and in general the policymakers. What can we say about the, the situation right now? The, there are three collision induced clouds that dominate low Earth orbit right now. And the extent is such that the breaker fragments from these events account for almost 15% of all the objects cataloged till date. That is since 1957. And roughly 45% of dangerous conjunction events, when I say dangerous, that means high probability of collision, uh, observed are involving the remnants from these 10 breakup events. So what are the uh, the top 15 clouds that uh, are there in Leo, we can see it on this chart. And we can clearly see the collision-induced clouds dominate in terms of the size of fragments that have been created and the person still on orbit. So uh, that is why ACET tests are so detrimental to the overall environment. If we were to take all the resident space objects in orbit and characterize them uh, based on object type, then we can clearly see the majority of uh, the population is debris. And majority of the debris population is, uh, is uh, the collision or induced uh, cloud like Fingen 1C and Cosmos 1408. So again, reiterating why the collision induced clouds are, are causing much more trouble and have such great debris generation potential. What we have seen in 2022 is uh, as we uh, as we collected all the conjunction alerts that we published for our users uh, during this time, we, uh, we ranked these different clouds based on the total conjunctions that were generated. And we can again see that top three rank holders are the collision-induced clouds. So those are the total number of conjunctions that were generated, high-risk conjunctions that were generated due to these clouds. So that is the threat that they are posing to operational satellites. 
And it's not just any number. If you see the, the rank four and rank two and rank one, the, the difference is three times, right? And if we take into account the probability of collision and take a product of it with the mass of both the objects involved, that then we get aggregated risk from that particular event. And if we aggregate the risk or all the, all the events that these, uh, these clouds have been involved in, then we can again see Feng in 1C topping the chart, which is because it is in this neighborhood where there are these ro uh, large rocket bodies, and hence the mass involved in these collisions are big, which means the debris generation potential is big. So this is what we are looking at, where the, there's a spike in 700 to 900 kilometer altitude, that is the, the debris generation potential and, uh, is more, and the, and the collision rate is more in this neighborhood. And that is why this is a bad neighborhood to be in. So do not send your satellites up there. <laughs> okay, so what is the solution? The solution is expanded ground-based radar network because we believe that radars are very nicely suited for tracking objects in low Earth orbit. Large F uh, FOV, field of view, and uh, rapid, uh, rapid rate of cataloging and tracking all of these sa uh, satellites uh, continuously and getting lower covariance on all of these. So the goal is to reduce the latency and ensure continuous tracking and have realistic covariance because realistic covariance is very important if you want to take action and do something about it. The goal is to demystify LEO environment because we just don't want to generate data and put it out there. We want to provide valuable insights which the operator can take action on. So that is what LEO Labs is doing. We have a global radar coverage. We are expanding our radar network. We just inaugurated Azores Portugal radar last week, and we are putting out Argentina radar soon. We are building it. So the goal is to have a good radar network so that we can have these metrics that we have right now and improve upon it. We can have reduced latency from radar pass to satellite EFM within 15 minutes. We can have faster processing of conjunction screenings. We can have millions of state vectors generated within one month, and we can have faster on-demand screening results. I really don't know why it showed as O equals N, so there's something wrong. But overall, you can see the metrics are uh, phenomenal, and that is what will help in operations, right? Okay, so not just the radar network, the building the infrastructure, we are also building the platform and we show our work. We are transparent and we make sure that our solutions are, uh, are traceable. We want to make sure that when we present a solution to you, you can trace our solution to our data to, to the solution and make informed conclusion about it. So that is the goal. We are generating conjunction data messages uh, often so that the the operators are alert about it and can take uh, appropriate actions. And we are generating other dashboards so that uh, the customer demands can be met according to the mission they are, uh, they are addressing. So overall, the goal is to, uh, to create a comprehensive suite, oh, I'm sorry, comprehensive suite of analytical tools, again, to create, generate insights and, and, and address the problem as and when it happens. If an event happens today, we are able to, uh, we are making sure that we are prepared to solve it and we are creating custom tools like Leo Breakup to address that problem. We are making sure that we can do forensics of a breakup event as the initial data, uh, data arrive and we can provide near real-time alerts to our users. So the, again, rich data set, will fo form the foundation of governance and norms. And that is what we are going to see here. We can see how the, the recent, uh, recent breakup of Chinese rocket body was, uh, was affecting the, uh, the environment as the number of conjunctions or different timeline can be seen here. And we can see there are clear spikes and, depth and, and uh, lows in terms of how the conjunction rate was changing over time. I'll move a little faster since I'm out of time. Uh, but uh, the, the Leo Breakup app is what I'm talking about to do, uh, to do short and long-term impacts on the neighborhood and assess the spatial density so that we can say 
clearly at what altitude the major impact is and where it will, uh, it will create problem for the operators. Finally, the, we are in Space Race 2.0, and what is driving uh, the competition is uh, because there are increasing stakeholders and there is lack of norms. So there is no way out of it other than having more data and creating more insights for our users. In all, uh, the goal is to provide comprehensive space domain awareness and create and, and have continuous, scalable, reliable solutions to enable space safety. In summary, direct ascent tests pose increased risk. A complete ban on these tests is the ideal outcome. But if an ASET test still occurs, the information and collision risk should be shared publicly. And commercial companies are major stakeholders, and that is what Leo Labs is trying to do, to continuously support operators and plans to enhance tracking capabilities over time so that we can continue to generate more insights for our users. Thank you.